So the second part today is more interactive. I don't know how long it's going to last because it is interactive. Um, so I've given you all a handout um, with um, some information about the Small Business Digital Grant. Um, so this is due on the 8th of October, not quite three weeks away. It goes really quickly. Um, so today we are going to go through a pretend business with the pretend project. We're going to assess eligibility. We're going to assess return on investment. And we're going to look at the structure of what the application would look like. So we're applying the principles from the first part of today. Okay, so eligibility. This is the eligibility directly from the grant website. You have to be able to answer yes to all of these questions. When you apply online, it's via a portal and you have to click on a radio button. I've never clicked no to see what would happen, but I imagine it would just boot you out. So um, again, if you have to squint, you're not a good fit. So this, is, this one, um, the criteria are actually fairly broad, a Queensland-based business, fewer than 20 employees, annual turnover less than 20 million, active ABN, registered for GST, and you have a headquarters in Queensland. So for example, if you're a national company but you have a branch in Queensland, that branch is eligible. Um, has anyone heard of this grant before or applied for it before? No? no? Okay. One of the things I get a lot is, um, can I use this to get a new laptop? No. Please don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the grant purpose. Um, so the whole idea of this is to make small businesses more competitive, more engaged in the local economy, um, more able to interact with people online and overseas. Matched funding. So what that need, means is for every $1,000 from the government, you have to come up with $1,000 and they pay you back after the project is um, done. So if you apply for $6,000, you're going to have to find 12 and you're not getting the six back until the end of the project. Just a cash flow thing. It can make it really hard for a small business um, and you need to know that before you apply because it can be really disappointing. Completely agree. I completely agree with you. Um, you are very welcome to pass that feedback to the um, Queensland government. No, 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 no. no sorry, I didn't. I didn't think you were having a go. I absolutely agree with you. And you can actually see people deflate when they realise they've got to come up with this stack of money. If you had money, you wouldn't be applying for a grant, right? Yeah. So um, it's better than a kick in the pants, but it's not as helpful as it could be. I completely agree. That's right. Um, in the application, you have to show how the technology or services will enhance your digital capabilities, help you employ more staff, be more competitive. So one of the things that happens really frequently is people say, well, if I bought a computer, I could employ another staff member. And that is a valid argument, but it's not enough to win this grant. It's really popular. Uh, um, projects that better align are going to be successful before that will be. So here's my example business. Um, Georgie is my cat, 14-year-old stripy grey tabby who is in charge of our house. So this business, Georgie's Cat Wash, has two full-time employees, including the business owner. Uh, Ipswich Business established in 2015, $240,000 turnover. Who knew washing cats would be so lucrative? Um, they have, we have a mobile cat washing service, um, and we've developed the Georgie's own range of feline bathing products. So is this business eligible? Yes, no, maybe. Yep. So you've. Yep. Is anything missing? Have you purchased product? Won the grant before? No, we haven't. Well, there's one more thing missing. ABN and GST. Yep. So this business does have all these things and you've gone through and identified what was missing, so well done. Okay, so what will the grant fund? Now this is from the guts of the grant application. It's not on the website, so I've had to start a fake 
application to get this detail out. I don't know why they do it this way because I think a lot of people get in and then realise that they've wasted their time. So digital content, receiving payments, specialised digital and digital planning, they're the four main categories. The technology or service must fall under at least one of these. So these should all be written on your handout. Yes? Page two. So you, you don't have to write it down if you don't want to. But there's something to bear in mind as we look, about, look for a project for Georgie's Cat Wash Services. So the first example project from Georgie's Cat Wash, the owner would like to update the business's website, video clips of cat washing techniques, a booking function for cat washing, online payment processing for goods and services and online shopping worldwide for the Georgie's own range of feline bathing products. So does this project meet at least one of the four key areas? Yep. Which one or ones? Digital content, receiving payment. Absolutely. Yep. Every, oh, you're listening. I'm so proud. Okay. So... Here's another project. The owner of Georgie's Cat Wash would like a new computer and printer, wouldn't we all? Um, but she also, <laughs> yeah, put up your hand. I know somewhere you can buy these things. Just <laughs> I know, smooth, right? Um, so in addition to that, she wants to update the website. Very, very worthy. Lost and found page to help reunite, reunite cats with their humans. Fundraising for vet care for homeless kitties and testimonials from cats who love their Georgie's own bathing products. So what about this project? Specialised digital Mm-hmm. Digital content creation if you're talking about mobile apps and that type of thing. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Digital. How is the purchase of a new computer and accessories no. linking? Oh, oh, it doesn't. She just wants it. So really good point. The other thing with this is while these things are technically developing digital content, it's not clear how they're going to help Georgie's Cat Wash grow or how they're going to help it employ more people, engage with the global economy. So on the surface of it, it doesn't look too bad. But if, if one of you came to me with a project like this, I would respectfully advise that I didn't think your chances of success were high. Yeah, but yeah, very worthy. Okay, so the return on investment for this grant, what they want to know is what's going to happen six months after the project is ended. So if we're going to go with project one, which is the um, video clips, the booking function, online payment, um, yeah. So the business owner estimates it's going to take 10 hours to write, edit and review the submission. The real cost to the business of her time is $100 an hour. Um, it's going to save her two hours a week of admin time, increase bookings by 30% and sales of the bathing products comprise $10,000 per year of turnover at the moment, which is expected to double. So I've made some assumptions here, and I know these figures are not realistic before anyone thinks um, I've lost any business sense. I know it's not real. So you'll remember I said that Georgie's Cat Wash has two full-time employees and one is the owner. So the owner is the one that has to find the 10 hours to write, edit, and review the submission while taking care of customers and washing the cats and doing the books and updating the website and buying food and, and all the things for life. Um, so we said $240,000 turnover, so $10,000 of that is, is the bathing products because the, the kitties like to smell um, lovely and nice. So what that turns into in money is it costs $1,000 to apply for the grant. Two hours per week over six months is 52 hours or $5,200. 30% 30, 30 increase in online bookings is an extra 17250 I did calculate it twice just to check. Um, and doubling the sales of the bathing products is an extra $5,000 in six months. So when we add all that up, the return on investment over six months, if it's successful, $26,450, which is better than a smack in the mouth. 
How much is Georgie's cat wash going to lose if they're not successful? $1,000. So probably for a business like this, that's feasible. Um, you don't calculate wanting to lose, but you can. This simple calculation obviously doesn't take into account the wages of employing a new person and all those sorts of things. Um, it's simple because it's a workshop, not it's not a cost accounting approach. Okay, so the business is eligible, project one is eligible, ROI project uh, calculations shows let's go ahead. What grant strategy will the owner use? So this is when we go back to the purpose of the grant. So enable the business to work smarter, engage with the global economy, online business opportunities, enhance digital capability, be more competitive, employ more staff. So this money is to help businesses grow. So we have to bear that in mind when we write the application. Stop now. So the business is going to need a videographer and editor, a web host. Do we know anyone that can do that? Fantastic. Web developer, do we know anyone that can do that? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so the business owner needs to get those quotes, so she needs to do that now. Um, now, writing for the audience. So who's going to benefit? What's going to happen? Where's it going to happen? When? Why does it need to happen? How much is, how much is it going to cost and how is it going to happen? And the key questions, so you have these on your handout as well. The project title, 15 words or less. Short description of a project, which technology or services um, are, are covered. Start and end dates, clear outline of how the technology and services will enhance the digital capabilities and an explanation of how it will assist you to grow revenue, profit, save time and create jobs. So. This is now more of the interactive bit of it because we are going to work together to come up with the outline of some answers. So if we go back to the title, title of the project, short description, 15 words or less. Don't all rush me. <laughs> so we're trying to demonstrate a summary, why, what is this project called? So the project is building the website, creating content, engaging a booking function and engaging um, e-commerce. All right. I've, I've come up with something really basic um, and it's not an elaborate title. I couldn't even come up with something ca catchy. Georgie's Catwash expansion to provide online bookings, purchase and payments. So this tells the grant reviewer exactly what Georgie's Catwash is trying to do with the grant and it covers over the purpose of the grant. So they should keep reading, let's hope so. So the short description, who, what, where, when, why, how. So who's going to benefit if they get the grant? The, the business owner, absolutely. And you know, by extension, the kitties of South East Queensland and around the world. Um, where is it going to happen? Yep, South East Queensland and? Y yep, and who's going to buy the Georgie's own pet bathing range? In Japan. Probably, actually, they would. So we've got international people as well. Okay. So what is it? What are we doing? Where... Um, updating the website to engage these things. That's pretty much what the um, project is about. When are we doing it? Well, we have a proposed start date and end date. So what they're getting at here is you can't buy anything before you get the grant and then get paid back for it. They want receipts with dates. Um, and it's a project, so it has a start date and end date. And the why is because we um, want to grow the business. That's why. We want to be more competitive, engage in the local economy, create jobs. Yep. Um, Six weeks, yep. Um, I think so. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it's about six weeks. So, 
then you've got three months to do to do the project. So it's like, wait, 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 go. It's 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 government money. That's how they roll. <laughs> okay, so yep. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yep. So three months from when you get the grant is when you have to have done the project. So that is in this case. That's correct. So you don't actually get any money until the project's done. Yeah, did everyone hear that? So, yeah, you're right. Um, often, <laughs> often, Nicole, yeah. Um, and, and, again, I do understand that's frustrating. Um, I, 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 I get it. Um, I, yeah. I guess it's like an incentive to believe in your business. Yeah. It is. So if you believe in your business, it doesn't matter the money, you will do it. And then you yeah. Yeah. So you have to remember the policy that the government is trying to enact with this grant. It's about jobs and growth, which um, if, if you're a winner, they're going to more likely back a winner. But if you're a brand new startup with no capital, it's a lot harder to write a compelling case um, for a grant like this. They do ask for all that financial information. So what was your turnover in the last financial year? How many staff do you have? How much time will this save you? How many staff will you have in six months? What's the expected increase in turnover? And they only talk about turnover. They don't talk about profit and they don't talk about profitability. So you can be turning over half a million dollars a year and still be, you know, shopping at Aldi and riding your bicycle everywhere because you've got no money for petrol, especially at the moment, right? Um, yeah, so, and, and, then, and then that can work against you as well. If you've got good turnover, they might look at it and go, well, you don't need the money. So it's... It, it is it is difficult. Do you mean the rate of new businesses who are successful with this grant? I don't know. Um, unfortunately, I, I'd love to know, but I, I don't have a friend who can help me with this program with some inside information. But if anyone does. The funding body. Um, so they may request clarification. Um, so for another grant, I've had the funding body come back and say, "Look, you've said this, but we don't quite get it. Do you mean this or that?" Um, I don't think they find, they do everything in writing because it has to be in writing. Um, I don't know that when, when the program's so oversubscribed, if they have time to do it. Yeah. I, look, I think so. I, I don't know how much um, autonomy the readers have. They've probably got a very strict set of guidelines. It's like a decision tree. And, yeah, as you said, computer says no. So how many would they actually... Well, this is a... Th yep, so... So the total funding is up to $10,000. But what sounds better, state government provides small business digital grant to 50 businesses or state government provides digital grant to 30 businesses. It might be the same amount of money, but the metric seems higher if they give more people a less amount of money. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. Jeremy. Do you, um, do you have a look over what a business wants to do and say, look, just forget it, don't waste any more time? Mm -hmm. Is that where you and all Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so some some of my clients are in here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will respectfully say this is not a good opportunity for you. Yep. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, am, I just had a meeting last week with um, a charity, a uh, performing arts charity, and they were really keen to pursue an opportunity um, with a very tight deadline. And I went in and I looked through it and um, gesundheit, that, and I just said, look, I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. I can write a compelling case, but I have no metrics to back it up. Um, I can't prove any of these outcomes and I just don't think it's going to be successful. This application, this particular application, it costs them more than $5,000 just to hand it in. Can you believe that? How rude is that? Um, so it would have cost them five, more than five grand plus my fee not to be successful. So I would very much like to have taken that project because it was a great project, but I, I had to say I'm sorry, but no. What I'm doing with them now is working on identifying other opportunities and getting them ready for next year. So the answer is yes, I will say I don't think this is a good fit. Um, it doesn't do me any good to write bids I, or submissions that I know will fail. And it makes me sad. It does. Um, I, I get sad when it doesn't get up and I get so excited when it does. From an operational point of view as a business owner, and I have experienced that, so we utilise attorneys, which is wonderful. Um, as a charity, as a co-founder of a charity, you get very emotionally invested in an opportunity that you foresee, you know, this sort of funding. So for me, when I see this, I'm like, oh my God, our website and, and whatnot. However, I'm starting to learn, but I know that if I was turning this sort of something like this, where we're at, um, rather than investing that money and knowing that the return isn't there, when we can look elsewhere or start to invest the money in other opportunities to slowly get there, um, it's good to have that person who can give that guidance, right? I think it's when that last point of getting the right person to proof and to go over your budgets and to understand from an emotional point of view. And that's a great resource to use. And not only that, like using this application process would be a good template um, for you to actually assess the value of the own project that you had in mind, yeah. um, if you know what I mean. So yeah. even going through it, if you go through the process and get the denied at the end, what a great measuring stick to have at your disposal for any future projects. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a good tool. Yeah. So thanks. A pleasure. Um, these two questions on the screen are the hardest ones to answer. There are only 200 words. You're not meant to use contractions, ampersands instead of and in business writing. Sometimes you just have to. Um, so you recall me saying earlier today it took me hours to write, you know, a couple of hundred words for a business I co-own. This is why, because you want to do all the things and explain why your project is worthy and you're going to take over the world and cats everywhere will be using Georgie's own bathing products, but you've got 200 words and you can't explain all the things. Um, this is why when I went, when we were doing the um, return on investment exercise, I made it clear, you know, what's it going to cost, what's going to come out of it, because this, that, all that information comes into this part. So the outline of how the technology or service will enhance the digital capabilities and make it more competitive. Online booking will help make it more competitive. Online payment will make it more competitive. It will save the owner time. The shipping worldwide will get them more customers. So it's a direct application. You might feel like um, you're repeating yourself and you kind of are. Um, there's only so many ways to say I really need this money, but that's kind of what you have to do. Um, and then the next bit, the explanation of how the project will assist your business, and that's why in the ROI exercise I had those metrics. $10,000 a year is for cat shampoo. We're going to double that. Increase in bookings of 30%, which is an increase of you know so much money. Um, if you overstretch with your goals and say you're going to go from a turnover of $240,000 to a million dollars a year, that doesn't do you any good. They, they're going to know you're telling porkies. Um, and they're going to ask for some supporting evidence of that. So if the calculations can't be easily worked back, it, it's not a good, good idea or a good submission. Proofread. Have you adhered to word limits? So someone was telling me in the break what they used to do for the Queensland Gambling Community Fund. Yeah. Yep. So um, I got in and started typing away and then I got a thing. You've extended your 3,000 character limit. So Yep. That's where every word counts. Mm. So you've got to really um, assess is this telling the story I need it to? Does it have impact? 
Exactly right. Um, so, yes, yeah, some grants have character limits. It, it is the most amazing thing and it's mind-boggling. Um, and that, that's when you stop using your big fantastic words and start using good. <laughs> okay, are your quotes fit for purpose? So some quotes are really straightforward. Um, I am buying a remote control and it's going to cost me $20. A quote for service is not straightforward and needs to demonstrate how the service provided is fitting in with the grant program. So, for example, if you're engaging some digital services, including coaching, um, it might be that you're getting a web developer in and part of her or his work will also be to train you how to use WordPress. But the grant, the quote needs to be quite specific um, I actually do review the quotes as well when I help clients with this um, with this grant, and it has proven successful. Uh, sorry, for another grant, it's proven successful um, to to review the quotes as well as the submission. I haven't done it for this grant in particular, though. Just for another one, does your budget balance? Sounds really basic, but um, if you're typing on a keypad, you get your eight and your five mixed up. Um, if they don't come back to you and say um, we need clarification. It might look like you're sloppy. It might look like you're fibbing. Um, I don't know if they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt because there are so many applications. Um, and can you presume, pr prove the assumptions if required? So I made assumptions earlier on about the increase in business. Can I prove them? Have actually done, done my business numbers and gone, right, you know, if this, then that, because... And are those assumptions reasonable? So, you know, in this case, we can't assume that every cat owner in southeast Queensland suddenly has more disposable income. We can't assume that um, all customers will be repeat customers. So there's, there's just things like that. You've got to be quite sensible with it. Um, I don't know. If you have a mate who's an accountant and will do it for free, maybe bounce it off them. Personally, for something worth this much, I wouldn't get my accountant to do it because he charges like a wounded bull. He's worth it. He's fantastic. But, yeah, I wouldn't use him for something like this. Um, so, yeah, you um, you need to do all these things when you do the grant. So any grant, but I wanted to use this grant because it's the one at the moment that a lot of people are applying for. So I do have a special offer for you all today. And, no, it is not a set of steak knives. Um <laughs> If you want to pursue this opportunity and um, you are engaging Centra Networks um, as your quoting provider, um, I will give you a discounted rate. So your quote is individual on the basis of how much time I think it's going to take me. So I can't tell you it's going to cost this much money or that much money, but you will get a special discount because of my friends at Centra organising this and providing the venue. So that's all the things from me, guys. Thank you.